Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Jonathan Lip here from the Big Apple Film Festival, and welcome to BAF Chats, another episode. We're here at Connolly's in Midtown Manhattan, and we're here with J.C. Corey, the director of The Pill and All Relative, uh, and we're going to uh, ask him a few questions about indie filmmaking, casting, distribution, and so forth. So, um, J.C.'s film The Pill screened at the Big Apple Film Festival a few years back. The film stars uh, Rachel Boston, uh, Noah Bean, Anna Klumski, uh, and now he's got a new film, All Relative, which is currently out. Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about uh, All Relative. Hi. Uh, All Relative, yeah. It's, uh, it's another indie that I made. Um, it's a, it stars uh, Connie Nielsen, uh, Jonathan Sadowski, Sarah Paxton, uh, David Aaron Baker. And um, it's about a, a guy who uh, falls for the girl of his dreams, uh, goes to meet her parents for the first time, only to discover a a horrible secret from the past that uh, turns his weekend completely upside down. Um, yeah, it's called, so sort of a, a living nightmare, if you will. But, it, but it's a comedy and a little bit of a drama, too. A dramedy, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, well, one of the, the questions I want to ask you is, um, you know, as an indie filmmaker, uh, and a lot of the people who are watching our series are indie filmmakers, emerging filmmakers, um, how do you attract known talent? Like you just mentioned some names with All Relative and as well as uh, In The Pill. Uh, how do you attract this known talent to these, you know, lower budget sort of indie films? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's always a challenge, I think, with indie film. I think the most important thing, 100%, is the script. If the script's good, hopefully great, then you have a much better chance of getting their agents, managers, their team on board, and then they'll push for it. You know, obviously the talent themselves, you know, Connie, Sadowski, those, you know, they have to really feel like this is worth their time. Because, you know, actors do things for three reasons. It's either the, you know, they feel they're going to work with some great director, or they're going to do a role they've never done before, or they feel they're going to win an award, you know. So if, if you're not some big-time director, and, you know, you, you're, that means you're probably not going to get nominated for an Oscar unless you end up winning Sundance, which, you know, is winning the lottery, right. then it, it has to be a role that they feel they haven't really tackled before that others might not give them the chance to do. So that's sort of your in. If you can you know, approach them and say, hey, I've got this really cool thing. I know you've never done this before. You know, with Connie Nielsen, this was the first time where she uh, did, you know, more of a comedy. Because she's known for more, you know drama, thriller, action, sci-fi, but she'd never really tried to tackle dramedy or even, or even comedy. And there's a lot of great funny stuff that she does in this movie, and I said, you know what, I, I, I think Connie could, could knock this out of the park, because she's got the sex appeal, but I think she's also got a very funny side to her that I don't think had been kind of brought out in, in other films. So, and so she liked that. That, that. That's what, you know, I think sparked her interest initially. Um, and I mean, you've developed a uh, you know a name for yourself as an independent filmmaker. You're, you're establishing yourself, and have established yourself as an independent filmmaker now. But what about the kid coming out of NYU? You know, the 22 year old who has no connections yet. You know, he's not you yet. He's trying to work his way up. How does he go about approaching an agent of a well known talent? Um, I mean, I'd have to guess it'd be the same way that I did it, which was uh, you know make something that's good. Make something that, you know, you don't have to win Sundance to, to, to get the attack. I mean, I, my agents are with Gersh, and they, I got their attention because I made the pill, you know? And I, I didn't go to Sundance with the pill. I didn't go to Toronto. I didn't go to any of those big festivals. But I made a good film, and you, know, you liked it. Your festival liked it. Some other solid festivals liked it. And I think it's one of those things where, like, if, if it's good, if you make something that's quality and it's good, eventually people start to realize it, and you can, I think, break down through a lot of, through a lot of doors that way. I mean, it was, you know, I think it was at the Dances with Films, I think what, Jay Cohen from Gersh was there, and I approached him, and I said, hey, I'd love to show you my film. He's like, okay, leave it you know, with my office. I left it with his office, and like a month later, I got a call from them. They watched it. They are like, we really like it. We want to, you know, we want to represent you. It was that, it was that simple. You know, and, I, and it was, there was no connections. There was no nothing. It was just, here's my film. They thought it was a good film, and they, they saw potential, and, and that was it. Okay, and you know. I guess the, the last question is, let's say I'm a filmmaker who, you know, is lucky enough to get my film made, um, and I begin distributing it, whether it's on my own, through self-distribution, or I go through, uh, you know, a distributor. How do I go about marketing a film when there's just so much content out there in the marketplace today. You have Netflix with a million films and shows. You've got Amazon Prime. You've got, you know, YouTube. I mean, every, you know, all these outlets now. Uh, how do you go about, I know The Pill, All Relative, I know these films are doing really, really great on VOD. Uh, how do you go about separating yourself from the rest of the crowd? That's another good question. Um, I would have to say, you know, when you're dealing with these 
these micro budget indies, you, you know, you don't have the big marketing budget, you know, that we all want. You know, you have basically less than $100,000. If you're lucky, you even have $100,000 as, as a marketing budget. So I think what you have is the poster. The, po the key art is so important. And I can't tell you so many times I see films, you know, like whatever, on iTunes, whatever, and I look at the poster and I'm like, eh. Like, it doesn't really make me die to want to click on that. And you have to make someone want to click on your movie. So the poster, I'd say, is the most important thing. The title, also, you know, if it starts with the letter A, even better, because a lot of that VOD stuff's alphabetical. So, I was, you know, the poster, the title, um, yes, it helps if you can get some name actors in there. But, again, that's, you know, it's hard to get, you know, Sandra Bullock or Tom Cruise if you're making a, a tiny indie. So I, I would have to go just make sure, you're, make sure the film's awesome, as, as, as good as it can be. Make sure it's got a commercial concept that you can say in one or two sentences to try and hook people. You know, before I make my films, I'll pitch it to like 100 people, like, and just try and get that pitch down to one sentence and see if their eyes light up when I say that one or two sentences, you know. Um, and if you can, if you, you know, then you know you're onto something. You've got, you, you, you've got a, a, something that, that will hook people right away in terms of the log line. And then make the poster as awesome as it can be, you know. Make it catchy, make it, I don't know, something sexy or fun or something, you know, striking. And the title. Those are your, those are your three, you know, your three weapons, I guess, if you, if you don't have a $100 million marketing budget. <laughs> how does, uh, just one last thing, how does social media play a role in all of this uh, in terms of marketing these films? You know, it's funny, I, I don't really know, honestly, ultimately, like I don't, I, I, we never did a double blind study of what happens when you do no social media and what happens when you just have a great poster title and you put it in the right folders on VOD and I, you know, iTunes pushes it and Netflix and Hulu. I mean, I have to assume that social media helps. Uh, but it's, you know, and it's one of those things where, like, you have to do it because everyone else is doing it, you know? But I think that, you know, I mean, it helps. It helps, like, when, when you know, when we got iTunes to retweet something that Sarah Paxton tweeted. Because iTunes has, like, I don't know, whatever, hundreds of thousands, you know, of, uh, of, of followers. So you, you have to assume that that stuff helps. How much, I don't know. No one will never know. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, JC. Thanks for coming out and talking to us. All right, thanks a lot. And remember, the uh, 12th Annual Big Apple Film Festival is November 4th through the 7th at Village East Cinemas this year. And check out The Pill and All Relative. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot.